All right, so here's a rush job that I got. Um, it's a, another tree company. I think they do more logging. Uh, they got a hydraulic line on their skitter. Uh, it goes to the claw part. It has a hole in it. Um, it looks like somebody welded this, or raised it already around here. But up in this area, in that white box, it's leaking. Uh, so I'm going to clean it up and throw a weld on it. Uh, we're calling this a rush job, but as you can see, I'm not rushing. Uh, it's important that you take your time and do this correctly. Otherwise, there's no point in doing it at all. Um, so, you know, get out of that mindset of you've got to rush, 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 rush. Even though you're calling it a rush job, still take your time, do it correctly. Um, so I'm going to clean it up first. It's pretty oily. Another thing about this job is uh, the customer had me come out and uh, take a look at it. Well, first he called me up and then he said, oh, I got a, a thin hole in my hydraulic line. So I came out, I take a, I take a look at it and he's like, man, I really wish you could just, uh, you know, just weld it in place there so we don't have to take it apart. And I was looking at it and I was like, look man, like, if you want me to even attempt to repair this thing, it's got to come off. Uh, and I'm going to have to take you back to my shop to run, uh, be able to do this correctly. So I got to run the pig welder. Um, out in the field, you know, it, it had some wind, which normally, um, you know, I can work with. But with this thing being a high pressure hydraulic line, if I get any porosity in this, uh, it's going to fail and there's no point at all of even attempting to repair this thing. If, uh, you know, you know it's bad from the start. So, you know, if I was set up more for mobile TIG jobs like this, you know, I could have like a mobile TIG set up in an enclosed trailer or like a box truck or something. But I do more structural repairs than anything, so, you know, I'm not set up to do removal TIG stuff like this. Alright, so the outside of this is clean enough, I think. Um, I think I'm going to run the acetone down the inside of this. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to have the best chance of success that I can. Alright, so that might have done something might have cleaned out the inside a little bit. Hopefully. I got a 
find the spot I'm supposed to weld again. There it is. Alright, so I'm definitely going to need to grind that down just a tad. Get some clean metal there. I gotta be careful when I do this. It's super easy to over grind um, these thin little thin wall things. I think it's a little bit thicker than I think it is. Uh, Something just scuffed that up and pretty much wore it down. So, okay, now I gotta try to find a way to position this. Hopefully, I have these super, super fancy, expensive weld positioners here. Super fanciest equipment to do this stuff. Alright, there we go. I should be able to position and get a good weld on that. You guys may not be able to see much, but it is what it is, you know. My switch this. Right, there we go. I'm running about 90 amps on the inverted. Um, probably gonna get the papper on here.
All right, so I got that welded up. Um, if you notice, I closed the door when I was welding that, and I had the papper system on. Uh, I can still smell burning hydraulic fluid. Um, I had the welder set at 90 amps. If I, I think I hit around like 50 amps or so, and it just blew a hole right through that thing. Um, so, that is the weld repair. It is not pretty, but it is a weld, you know? I mean, look what this other guy did. Whoops, hit the camera. Yeah, look what that other guy did, you know? So, as long as it's functioning, uh, should be okay. Uh, I think I have some some of that dye penetrant stuff somewhere around here. I might, I might wait for this to cool down. I gotta use the bathroom. This thing will cool down when I'm doing so. And uh, yeah, I'll make sure that leaks, or not, make sure it doesn't leak, or there's no crack or whatever. I have no way to pressurize this. Um, not even with the air compressor, so. Yeah, the only way to know for sure if it works is to hook it up and test her out. Alright, so, I don't have the dye penetrant stuff, or at least I can't find it. I could have swore I had it somewhere, but, uh, yeah, can't seem to find it. Um, part's cooled down now. I'm looking at it. It does look like it will work. Um, I might hit it with the wire brush and check it out. But, uh, it, it's just looking like it'll work. Uh, this spot here where it's kind of getting thin a little bit, I really don't want to hit that with the welder. I don't think right now because if you know that's one of them things these guys are trying to run this thing today um, if I hit that and I blow a hole there start opening that up you know I could take a 20 minute welding repair and turn it into six hours real quick um, especially because I'm not like an expert TIG welder um, you know, I've learned how to TIG, uh, and I can do it somewhat decently, I think, now. But I'm not, you know, I'm not your go-to guy for TIG welding. Um, so, yeah, I think what I did today is probably going to be good enough to get them running today. And then if this is not good enough for them, I would probably suggest that they get a new part on order as quick as they can. So yeah, just giving it a, a once over here, checking it again. Um, I do believe this will work. So yeah. Guess that'll probably end the video, unless there's other problems. But uh, yeah, I had to get this back out to the customer.